the sixth episode of season two, the penultimate episode, it's upon us, and it's safe to say that we're drawing closer to seeing tragedy occur. With the fifth episode concluding the way that it did, with Tanya making a revelation about Quentin and Jack, Ethan and Harper's relationship looking like it's going to be heading south, and Lucia and Albie spending more and more time together, things aren't looking good for most of the main characters. With the release of the trailer for the sixth episode, I thought I'd break down and explain all that there was to take away from it. So let's get into it. Here is the White Lotus Season 2 Episode 6 trailer explained. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. The trailer for Episode 6 opened up on the morning of the sixth day of their trip, and it started with Ethan going on his morning run as most of the mornings have done on the trip so far. Other than the morning after the night in question and in episode 5 due to the confrontation between himself and Harper, he was running through Sicily and you could sense the fear that was within him, and that he was running to let out stress. I believe he has the fear of Harper starting to change within him, and the realisation that things were looking like they could be going in a different direction in their marriage moving forward. As this was happening, we had dialogue being spoken between Ethan and Harper. Ethan said, we've always been honest with each other. And Harper responded with, we've not been honest about how we're not attracted to each other. This was leaning in on the fact that throughout the entirety of the trip so far, we've not seen the pair engage in anything intimate, even though Harper wanted to. When we saw Ethan shut her down several times, we saw that it was something that was on her mind and was affecting her. As the dialogue was being spoken, we had a shot of Harper walking through the lobby and her catching a glimpse of Ethan talking to Lucia and Mia after he'd just gotten back from his run. I imagine in this situation, Mia and Lucia have approached Ethan because they want the money from Cameron for the other night, which he hasn't paid yet. This is important to the story now though, as Harper now has faces to the two girls in question that Ethan mentioned the other morning. After this, it cut to the scene where we heard the original piece of dialogue being spoken, and it was in Ethan and Harper's hotel room, and Ethan then said, I love you, to which Harper responded with, it's so depressing. Most likely alluding to the fact and finally acknowledging that she's not in a happy marriage. She knows that they love each other, but she might be questioning, is this what life is actually supposed to be like? Following this, we then cut to the villa that Tanya and Portia were visiting, and we had Tanya speaking with Portia. But it didn't look as though she was going to tell Portia what she saw during the night, which is extremely baffling. Tanya stated, when I see you, I see a younger version of me. And it then abruptly cut to a different piece of dialogue where she said, you should slow down with this guy. So it seems as though instead of being direct, she's going to subtly inform her that something strange is occurring and that Jack isn't all as he seems. After this, we then saw Portia walking around and Jack jumping out from behind a pillar. I think this is rather symbolic of the fact that there's a burning secret inside of him that's going to come out and get Portia, just like the way that he jumped out and scared her then. I do question if he has genuine feelings for her, or if it's just part of a wider scheme, but I think it is the latter. The next scene that we had was of Alby introducing Lucia to Bert and Dominic and stating how she was going to be joining them on their day trip as a translator. Obviously, Lucia has met both Bert and Dominic, so it will most certainly make for an interesting trip. However, it seemed as though Bert, Dominic, and Lucia were going to play none the wiser so they could keep things cool and not awkward for Albie. Bert said, so tell us about yourself, my dear. What do you do? And she responded with hospitality as she looked over at Albie. Dominic also looked over at Bert in this instance as if to imply, what are you doing? Are you trying to drop me in it? But I imagine that will be the extent of the risky conversation in the car. After this, we were then back at the villa in the evening with Tanya, Quentin, and a mysterious gentleman who we'd never seen before. Quentin did say that he would find Tanya a man for the night that they were in the villa, so this could be the very person. Now that Tanya knows that things aren't all as they seem, I feel she will be more cautious before just jumping into anything and partaking in what the group suggests, because her life could be at stake. The line that was being spoken after this was Jack saying, we've got to live life every day as it comes. Underneath this dialogue, there was a shot of Valentina sitting down at the bar, where she as an example most certainly isn't living her fullest life. She's not fully being herself, and I feel this may be the moment before she spends the night with Mia and they partake in fulfilling the deal that they agreed on. After this, we cut to Jack saying, who knows if we're even going to be here tomorrow. This could be a subtle hint to us as the audience that maybe the group are going to try and harm Tanya during this penultimate night, or at least make the plan that they have kick off into gear and reach its climax, meaning that she wouldn't be there tomorrow. 
Greg hasn't returned yet, and I feel it's very much time for him to return, so I feel we may see him arrive. There's been a few theories around Greg being the cowboy that Quentin was in love with, and I feel that could be the case. Here are a few reasons as to why I think that could be the case. Quentin said that the person that he was in love with was a straight American man, which Greg gives the impression he is. When he was on the phone, we heard Greg saying, I love you, meaning that he could be in love with Quentin too if he was on the other line. We heard Greg saying, yes, I'm going to. Yes, this is not the time, meaning that he could be saying that he was going to break up with Tanya, but it just wasn't the right time right now. And he also said how Tanya doesn't have a clue and that she's clueless when he was on the phone to somebody showing that he could well be part of the wider scheme that's at play. After this, we then had Lucia saying, he says I owe him money, as we had Alessio following Alibi and Lucia in the car, and then watching them from a distance. Alibi questioned if he followed them there, which does make me then in turn question if this is part of a scheme that Lucia is playing on the family, getting Alessio to act as if he's intimidating Lucia and the rest of them, with the intention of getting them to pay him money, which would then get split between Lucia and himself. The next shot that we had was of Ethan and Cameron at dinner, and Ethan confronted him. He said, I know what you're doing, man. Were you in our room? This was intertwined with a scene of Ethan walking towards his room, banging on the door, and even when he opened it, it looked as though the latch was on it to prevent it from opening. I think Cameron and Harper definitely spent time together, and they made use of the connecting door in the room so Cameron was able to make a swift exit when Ethan returned back. There was a focus on the door at the start of the season where they said they wouldn't need it, but I feel this time round, it's going to be something that most definitely will be used. And even though Cameron may have snuck out, it won't go unnoticed by Ethan. So a divide in the friendship is definitely going to be something that's going to occur. Ethan may end up on his own. Harper may walk away and he's going to burn bridges with Cameron, leaving him in a vulnerable position. I feel that these final two episodes of the show are most certainly going to erupt with all of the emotion, anger, tension, and rage that's been building over the past five episodes. I can't wait to see what's going to happen and who exactly won't make it to the end of the season. I'm going to be gutted when the show does come to an end because it's been a real stylistic, thought-provoking show like no other that's out there at the moment. I'm just glad that we've definitely got a season three. So, there you have it. The White Lotus Season 2 Episode 6 Trailer Explained. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions, and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at brainpilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What do you think is going to happen next? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.